Here's the problem, though. They basically invoked in, in the in the effort to uh, invoke uniformitarian processes. Right. They basically said, okay, well, what we've got here is pro pro glacial lakes, meaning bodies of water in front of the glaciers. They're held in by ice dams, and and the reason that was such an attractive idea is because in modern times we do see examples of that, particularly in Iceland. You know, when you have a uh, a volcanic eruption under the ice in Iceland, it melts a, a, a reservoir of water, which will eventually, usually within a week to two weeks, will force its way through the ice and it will outburst in this catastrophic flood. You also have them in a lot of them in Alaska. You've, you know, they're documented in, in the Pyrenees, in the Himalayas, in the Andes, in the Rocky Mountains. So they're a real thing. However, and here's the big however to me, when you look at the very largest of the modern outburst floods, they're not even one thousandth the scale of these ancient floods from the end of the last ice age. That's the problem because we're looking at, at you know, we might be looking at a total volume of water that's say a half a cubic kilometer uh, outbursting. And you might be looking at peak discharges of 20, 30, 40, maybe 50,000 cubic feet per second. When we're talking about these ancient floods, we're talking about hundreds of millions of cubic feet per second, which is, which is almost inconceivable, right? right? Um, and so I've always maintained, and, and, and a few of the geologists looking at this stuff have sort of, you know, uh, admitted that, yeah, can we just extrapolate up and say, well, because we see a, a modern lake in front of a glacier breaking through an ice dam, can we just scale up three orders of magnitude? Um, but that still seems to be the, the prevalent approach. And, and the thing about it is, is that if you study glacial ice, particularly in this kind of environmental context we're looking at here, it is not the kind of a medium uh, that can withstand much hydraulic pressure at all. And, and, you know, when we build modern dams, we use, you know, bedrock grouting. Uh, to, to fill every single pore in the bedrock. Because if you don't do that, you're going to have a dam failure. And when you look at the great <laughs> dam failure, forgive waka, the pun. Waka. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and we can see. Statistics. You know, what's that? Some damn it. good statistics. <laughs> Some damn good statistics, yeah. Well, as if I always said, the, 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 the ice dam theory, which is the one that's always invoked now to explain these catastrophic floods, just doesn't hold water. Literally. <laughs> I took a little bit. Rim shot. Puns on puns. <laughs> yeah.